I was having to move in big boulders by hand. You may remember the story of Linda McDaniel, the Waverly grandmother trying to convert a storage shed into a home after losing everything in the flood. She's received lots of help from lots of people. Laura Triplett gives her rides. Now that Linda's truck is broken down, Laura picks up building supplies in the race against an even colder weather. But Laura is not the fortunate one able to help. Her story is of even greater suffering, greater loss. We did. But, you know, I think the best way to heal is to help others. Uh, for us, we, uh, we wallowed around in misery for a long time until we realized, you know, it wasn't getting us nowhere. Laura was home with her kids. Her husband, Greg Triplett, was the only Waverly police officer on duty that morning when the water came. I told Greg, my husband, I said, honey, the house is filling up with water and we can't get out. I don't know what to do. And then we lost phone service. Officer Triplett did not rush home. He honored his job and duty, despite every instinct to drop everything and go to his family. The day of the flood, Greg called me and he said, he was worried about his family. He lost contact with them. He was scared to death that they had drowned uh, that day. The water kept rising. At first, Laura made a video. Blue Creek's are now coming through the front yard. But then when they had to get on the stove and dining room table, when the house started to break in two, no more video. It uh, popped and cracked and snapped and buckled, and we prayed, prayed hard. And uh, we survived. There was a lot that didn't. They lost their home and their restaurant in town, but they were thankful, if not for long. He and I still were just so grateful that the kids and I made it, you know. And then um, five weeks later, I was planning his funeral. Officer Greg Triplett died of COVID in the weeks after the flood. Laura Triplett became an instant homeless widow without a job. And while there were days of inconsolable grief, the family worked their way back into the world. Woo! They laid plumbing lines for Linda McDaniel's shed. They continue to help anywhere they can, despite all the very good reasons to focus on their own difficult situation. Waverly Police Chief Grant Gillespie. Probably for folks around here, it, it wasn't so surprising that they were out helping folks because that's what they kind of quietly did here for many years and uh, you know, uh, Greg and his family lived a simple life. They never had a lot of uh, things, but they always made sure that folks had what they needed. And people are paying that back. Even as Laura is serving other people, her family is being served. Gifts, everything. People have just been overwhelming. I just got a call just a little while ago wanting me to be at uh, Salter's Chapel Church to get a gift for on Thursday, and then we're supposed to be um, at the Legion Hall down here on Thursday at 11 to get gifts and I told her I said don't get used to this because it's gonna be hard on all these parents next year when, when you know right, right. I've forgotten again <laughs> but uh, yeah she's got more clothes than she's ever had sometimes who you are matters we're not talking about rich and famous we're talking character Greg was a remarkable patrol officer his funeral was attended not just by friends and family but by many of the people he arrested who often apologized to Greg after their arrest. In fact, most of the time at the end of the, the shift, the guy was apologizing and how disappointed that he disappointed Greg. And, you know, it was just those kind of things. People just respected him because he treated everybody uh, like they were somebody. And, uh, and that's we even have that now at the back door to remind other officers, you know, treat everybody like they're somebody. And that's how Greg lived his life. That lives on in his loving wife and his fine, capable boys who treat everybody like they are somebody. I asked Chief Gillespie what would help Waverly. He said it would be great if people would still volunteer, come down, drive around, look at the devastation and then stop and spend some money, have lunch, do a little shopping. Those small things would go a long way for a better Waverly Christmas. Metro Water Services overlooks both trash and recycling, but they're having issues now because their trash contractor is in bankruptcy. Fox 17 News' Maggie Lemire is live tonight in Nashville with a closer look at how the city is dealing with this change just days before Christmas. Maggie. 
Erica, whether it's your regular gift wrap or just some recyclables, people rely on these types of services weekly, but now they're being asked to do some different changes, and that is because there are some problems with the city's company. First and foremost, people should be frustrated. Metro Councilman Freddie O'Connell is talking about Metro Water's decision to hit the pause button on curbside recycling. The reason that recycling is being suspended is because they are trying not to fall behind on core trash collection. Red River, the company in charge of trash services, is in bankruptcy and trying to reorganize. That's left the city holding the bag, now diverting recycling crews to pick up trash. I have known, like everybody on council, uh, that we've been having chronic issues uh, with Red River. This goes back to, this kind of came to a head last year. Fox 17 called Red River to find out what the company is doing to get back to the job they're being paid for. We are still waiting to hear back. On social media, Nashvillians are upset, with some commenting on the poor timing of all of this. Just days before Christmas. Councilman O'Connell says he's frustrated too. As I sit here talking to you, my three recycle bins in our alley are completely full right now. So. so why doesn't Metro just hire someone else to pick up the trash? The city tells Fox 17 News because Red River is in bankruptcy, the city can't terminate the contract without permission of the court. And the city is communicating to residents, asking them to use the various drop-off sites available. You can head to our website for more information on where those locations are. Those are on our website, fox17.com.